Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, where we talk an awful lot about trades, and we're going to talk about another one today, about a player that is maybe not as well known to a lot of people. Jake McCabe from the Chicago Blackhawks. We just talked about Tarasenko. We talked about the Melka. We're going to be doing O'Reilly trades, probably Jonathan Taves. And we talked about Horvat two months ago. And just before I re-talked about him again, he got traded again. Two months ago, people thought I was crazy for thinking that Horvat would be traded. Go check out that video and you'll see why. And we're going to look at now a guy that is to far as I'm concerned, one of the most underrated defensemen in the league in Jake McCabe. We're going to look at an article that suggests that he might be available. We're going to look at him himself, Jake McCabe, how much he costs, and about seven teams that should be interested in Jake McCabe. As far as, by the way, my lighting and the shadow. That's just the way it goes here. We have no editing. We have one take, no frills. I'm not going to get a big team to make everything look pretty for you. So if you want something pretty, you want to go somewhere else. Because this is hockey, boys and girls. Hockey ain't pretty. All right. This is all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. If you like all sports and teams within those sports, you will like the All Sports Network. It's also part of Manscaped. Manscaped. If you like like things going down there the way it should be, all trimmed and shit, you'll like Manscaped. Remember I said that. All right, so we're going to look at the article. We're going to look at Chicago Blackhawks, what they might want, and we're going to look at McCabe himself. So let's get started, shall we? There we go. This is the article in question. It's from The Score, one of the most well-renowned publications in the land, boys and girls. A pair of Chicago Blackhawk blue liners are gathering quite a, quite a bit of interest. By the way, it's Jake McCabe and Connor Murphy. I like them both. Both. We're doing Jake McCabe today, but I may do a Connor Murphy down the road. Both are 29-year-old defensemen. Uh, Defense-orientated blue liners, yes, they're defensive Defensemen, and they are darn good at it. Unlike many of the players that they call defensive defensemen, these two are extremely good defensively. Very good. Extremely maybe overstating that, but they're very, very good. The Edmonton Oilers, Los Angeles Kings, and Toronto Maple Leafs are among believed interested in the defensemen. Just a little hint, L.A. and Toronto are part of the seven teams we will be looking at. McCabe is in his second season with the Blackhawks. He's a left shot. He's playing 19 minutes and 20 seconds per night and has tallied 14 points in 45 games, the highest scoring rate of his career. His 45.3 five-on-five Corsi Four lead Chicago defensemen according to natural statric. As much as I, I mean, Corsi is okay, but it doesn't tell the whole story. McCabe is way better than the 4.53% Corsi that he projects as. He is a, easily a 3 4, and a lot of teams could be a 1 2 defenseman. And he's on a very good contract. I could show you all the statistics and bore you, but he is really, really good. Um, so we're going to look at that. And we're going to look at who he may go to, and we're going to look at him in general. Chicago. Chicago is garbage, okay? 
Jake McCabe, he's American. He can play the left or right side, and he does so very well. Big advantage, 6'1", 204. What is Chicago going to want? What they wanted in every trade they've made? Prospects and picks, baby. This is a team that's rebuilding maybe even improperly for a lot of people. These, this team is going die, going scorched down rebuild. Trading to bring out last year. Taze is probably gone. Kane is probably gone. They traded Kirby Doc. These are not even older guys. They are like, we're doing this all from the base right to the top. We're getting rid of everything. We're starting a whole new thing in Chicago. So the odds are that Jake McCabe, which we'll look at right now, as soon as my internet works, Sorry, I'm in a cabin way out in the country. So my internet is a little funky, but I'm not stopping and we're only doing one take. There we go. Jake McKay, I'm telling you, we're only doing one take. Uh, Eau Claire, Wisconsin, which is right around Chicago, so it's possible that he may not want to leave there, but... Honestly, you're leaving them. There was talk that they wanted to keep them. Uh, they wanted some veteran presence as they build around the organization, blah, 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 blah. But there is no way they're going to keep them. In the market right now, defensemen in the market right now, you're never going to get a better turn, return than with him right now. 29 years old, he's only getting older. He's probably never going to be better than he is right now. And there's probably never going to be a market better for him right now. There's very few defensemen on the market right now. I try to do trade videos where a team acquires a defenseman right now. And it basically doesn't happen. There's only a few. McCabe is one of them. And he's very good. And he's making $4 million this year, and he is making that for another two years past this year, which to me is an absolute steal. You are getting a really good contract from a really good defenseman who is not really all that old. 14 points in 45 games. Um, well, people will look at, well, he was minus 27 last year. I don't pay attention to plus minus, but if you do, he's on the worst, one of the worst teams in the league and he's a plus two. If that makes you feel better, fine. His defensive analytics are very, very good. This is one of the better defensive defensemen in the league right now. So. Which teams will be interested in a McCabe and what kind of return are you going to get for it, said McCabe. But first, let's see. Oh, I'm going to start with the Tampa Bay Lightning. Um, the reason why I'm starting with the Tampa Bay Lightning is, first of all, it was rumored a lot that the Tampa Bay Lightning might be interested. Do they have cap room? Nay, nay. No, they don't. Has that ever been a problem for them before? Nay, nay. No, it hasn't. They always seem to find a way if they want someone. Now, this is the first team on the list. I think they are one of the least likely teams, but it's possible. And one of the names I think that would come up here would be Nick Kerbix at 24 years old, who's put up 15 points in 38 games. Analytically, he has a lot to be desired defensively, but he's good offensively. But he's also a late bloomer. He's a guy who has taken a while to get into the league and probably has a lot of upside after this. Now, that doesn't really help out Tampa Bay right now. And Jake McCabe would help out Tampa Bay 
right now. Now, he's not going to play left side for Tampa Bay. They have Sergeyev, Hedman. I mean, they got a lot. But if they trade Perbix and a prospect, whom I'm not sure who that might be, maybe Trevor Carrick is sort of a prospect. Um, like I said, they don't have much in the cupboard here to trade. They could get him. They would have to trade a first-round pick, and I know they don't have one. That's the problem. This is a reason why I put Tampa Bay as one of the least likely. If you're a Tampa Bay fan, tell me, besides Perbix, who else would you give up in this trade? in order to get a solid defensive defenseman. I'll tell you what, if they were able to find a way, you got Hedman, I would put McCabe with Hedman, Sergeyev, Bogosian, and Cole and Chernak. I mean, that's just freaking beautiful. Maybe Cal Foot. Let's go Cal Foot and Nick Perbix. They get two defensemen for one. Would you do that, Tampa Bay Lightning fans? Those are basically your young defensemen going the other way for an older defenseman to win now. Do you want to win tomorrow in Tampa Bay right now with the people you have? Is tomorrow what you're looking for when you have Stamkos at 32 years old, Nikita Kucherov at 29, uh, Alex Kalorn, Patrick Maroon, like these guys, they're getting old in the tooth and they don't have much in the cupboard. Should they try for it again? Tell me what you think, Tampa Bay fans. Should you stick with what you got and see what you got, keep your first, and have a mind to the future? Or, well, you don't not even keeping your first because you already traded it. So should you have any mind to the future right now? Or should you, should you take a guy like McCabe and have basically – a top three defensive core for the next couple of years. Hedman's 32 years old, remember. I, I think he'll be good for a while. But Bogosian's getting long in the tooth. Ian Cole already is. You're going to need a replacement for that. And McCabe is not that old of a dude. He's 29 years old. I think they'd be interested. I just don't know if they have the pieces to do it. That's the reason why I have them as the least likely out of the group. But there is a window open there. Tampa Bay has a way of getting things done. Next, Florida Panthers. Again, one of the less likely teams to be able to do this, mostly because of the reasons why Tampa Bay is not a good reason for this. They have no first-round picks. They traded them all the way to all the lands. Did a stupid trade for... Ben Chirot last year, and yes, it's a stupid trade. It was a bad trade. You don't tra you don't do that trade. I, I, I don't even want to get into it. Comment in the comment section, Tampa Bay fans and Florida fans, and let me know. What, and and it, I'll I'll tell you why I think the Ben Chirot trade was really bad. But you have uh, no defense in Florida right now. You're Barely in a playoff spot. Forcing, if you have Mark Stahl in your top four, you don't have a defense. Sorry, you just don't. There's no way Mark Stahl should be in the top four of any defense ever. It's bad. You lost Uyghur, um with the trade in Huberto, and I still would do that trade all day long. But they have to rebuild their defense. And getting McCabe at $4 million a year would go a long way to do that, my friends. Now, how are you going to be able to do that? Because Chicago's going to want picks and prospects. How much cap space do you have? Let's take a look. Let's take a look, see. I don't think it's very much. I don't think it's very much $1 million, so you're going to have to trade a player. You're going to have to trade a player. It's going to be very tough. I've looked at this up and down. I think you got to trade Sam Reinhardt. Maybe, 
maybe, maybe they bite on Sam Reinhart, a 27-year-old. But the thing is, Chicago doesn't really need to be great right now. But I think that's all you got. Uh, give up Gregory De Denisenko. Give up Matt Kirstad and whatever picks you can get. I would do it, honestly. <clears throat> For a guy like McCabe and the way Florida is right now, I would do it. Try to build up your prospect pool later. But I don't know if they have enough. I put Florida in here because they so desperately need defense. They'll probably take care of it in the offseason. Next, the Buffalo Sabres. Florida Panthers fans, tell me what you think about that. Uh, I got the Buffalo Sabres here. They're just barely in a playoff spot. And guess what? Jake McKay played with the Buffalo Sabres before for a very long time. Um, so it wouldn't wreck chemistry at all because he would, you would just be bringing a player back in to the chemistry that you had before. Now, if you're in a position to be able to make the playoffs and you want to go for it, you can take McCabe. But he's got three years left on his contract. So you can bring him back, embrace him, and have a veteran defenseman to play with Darlene, Rasmussen, Power, McCabe. My God, man, that's a good defense. Seriously. Forget about Yoki Haru. Send him back to Chicago. I don't think they want him back. So that probably wouldn't be the deal. You could send Bryson over. Um, and they are, and you and Buffalo has prospects all the hell. Tons of prospects they could send back. They have Noah Oslin. They have uh, Victor Nuchev. They have their first round pick in 2023. They have their first pick round pick in 2024. I think, honestly, the 2000 pick in 23 and Jacob Bryson, who's still a young defenseman, who's good. I like him. Don't get me wrong, but he's no Jake McKay. I think that might do it. Maybe. Maybe Rasmus Asplin, who is a 25-year-old solid character dude, throw him in there. Would you do that, Buffalo Sabres fans? Bring Jake McKay back, man. I would do it. I would do it in a heartbeat. So fast. Like, Already done. Done, 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 done. I love Jake McKay. Never should have let him go. And that defense would be fantastic. As this team grows into what it's going to grow into, I would say with Darlene Salmingson, Power, McCabe, in next year or the year after, you have the best top four in the league to go with an amazing core up front. So I would do it. Now, the rumor, and in the article that I showed you, the Toronto Maple Leafs. First of all, we, of course, have to look at what they have for cap space, which is probably nothing. $1.2 By the way, subscribe to my channel, Buffalo Savers fans and Toronto Maple Leafs fans, and tell me what you think about this. To my YouTube channel, tell me what you think about this. But Ch Chicago could retain in this deal. That would be $2 million for the next three years. I don't think they do, though, because they don't really have to. So a player would definitely have to go back when it comes to Toronto. They wouldn't be my top team, but they've been so rumored that I felt like I had to put them almost as my top, as one of the, one of the top teams, one of the closer to the top teams out of the bunch. Um, but the more I looked at it, the more I thought, you know what, this could work. Justin Hall makes $2 million a year. If you're going to get McCabe, you don't need Hall, and Chicago could use him for the hell of it. 
I mean, I don't think that they're going to be clamoring all over themselves to get Justin Hall. So there's going to have to be a heck of a lot more than that part of the deal. But it certainly would make the money work pretty darn good. Pretty close. Things can be done to make the money work. But they're going to want more than that. And for sure, it's going to be the 2023 first round pick. And with what we've seen already, with the teams that are going to be interested, I would say it was going to take a prospect as well. And that prospect, you can tell me. Which one would you be willing to give up? But I think it would be Nicholas Robertson. <coughs> Nicholas Robertson, with Nicholas Robertson, you might get away with the 2024 first and Justin Hall. So, because I think Nicholas Robertson is certainly going to be a player in the NHL. Smallish. Maybe you got to go to the 2023. Tell me what you think. That McCabe is one of the most underrated defensive defensemen in the league. It doesn't look like you're going to be getting Muzzin back. And as much as I like Sandine and Lila Green, I still love them. I think they're fantastic. I think they're going to be great. But it's going to be. You need to win now. And if you get McCabe on this roster, you've got a much better chance of winning now. Not to mention Sandine and Lila Green would still play. They would be your 5-6 great defense right there and I know you're going to need forwards and well they can look at that as well but uh, as far as forward depth is concerned but if McCabe is available I'm not not picking up the phone my friends Toronto Maple Leafs fans subscribe to my channel that means search Perlo Wisdom NHL on YouTube because if you try to do it if you're not on Facebook, if you're on Facebook right now, you're going to have to do that to be part of it because Facebook won't let you subscribe for some reason. I don't know why. All right. Pittsburgh Penguins. And I have them high here because they are going to be so desperate for this trade. I really believe that they will go all in for a guy like Jake McCabe. He's 29 years old. He's only making $4 million a year. And honestly, he's better than pretty much every defenseman they have, except possibly Chris Letang, and I would even go say that he is. He's certainly better than Demelin, who I think could be part of the deal. Demelin, does he have a no-trade clause? If he has a no-trade clause, that is, oh my gosh, he does. I'm pretty sure that Demelin wouldn't be part of the deal because I'm pretty sure Chicago would be part of his no trade clause because they suck. So it's going to cost you a first round pick. You're going to need to get cap space off somehow. Get them to retain and give your first and second. First and second round pick. Philip Hollander. Just do whatever. You, oh, Kasperi Kapanen. Throw them Kasperi Kapanen, who nobody wants. Your first round pick in 2023. Second in 2024. Philip Hollander. Just throw everything, everything at the freaking dartboard and see what sticks because Pittsburgh ain't going to be relevant in a couple of years. This is the year. And if you want to even be close to relevant, you need a better defense than this. Devlin can't be playing on your top pair. Jake McCabe is a top pair defenseman making $4 million a year for the next couple of years. I would throw everything I got at this. Tell me what you think, Pittsburgh Penguins fans. Most people are probably going to think of Cray Cray. Jake McCabe, a top pairing defenseman, who the hell is he? But he is. He really, really is. Subscribe to my YouTube channel by going Perlo Wisdom NHL, Perlo Wisdom NHL on YouTube. 
and comment in the comment section. And I swear to God, I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you. Next, Washington Capitals. Yeah, buddy. Are you kidding me? If Washington's not in on Jake McCabe, then just forget about it. Um, let me. He's way better than Trevor Van Riemsdyk, although Trevor Van Riemsdyk is having a great year at 31 years old. He's way better. He's Martin Faharvey is very good at too. I wouldn't be putting him in this deal at all, but he can play the left side, and he's a hell of a lot better than Eric Gustafson. If you put Jake McCabe, and, and you still got Carlson coming in, right? Because he's injured, right, defense? Yeah. Nick Jensen plays bottom pair where he should be. The Harvey gets to play the left side. Gustafson doesn't even play in the playoffs. He's useless. And you put McCabe there with the Harvey or Van Riemsdyk. All of a sudden, this defense don't look so bad, my friends. Don't look so bad. And it's not like Washington is rebuilding or anything like that. I, when they do rebuild, oh my, the pain that that is. I, pretty, I think Leonis will sell the team, probably. Because <laughs> it's going to be devastating. But the fact of the matter is they're not right now. And they do have, I believe, their 2023 first. Bye-bye. In this deal, no doubt about it, they're 2023 first. Oh, I wanted to look at their cap space, which is pretty limited, I imagine. Oh, they can do it. $5 million they have in cap space. They don't even have to trade a player in this deal. So they can trade their first round pick and whatever prospect they can find that's worthy, which isn't really all that many. But Joe Snively, Alexi Protus, big kid. He's played in the league for a little bit. First round pick, 2023, Alexi Protus. And Washington is barely in a playoff spot right now. So it's not a bad 2023 pick. But honestly, if you're going to, if they're going for it, there's no use like. Oh, well, we're not going to make it. Blah, 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 blah. There's no such thing as that in Washington. All your players are old. If you have any chance at all, you got to make the playoffs. And I imagine they will. But honestly, with this defense, without a guy like Jake McCabe in there or something, you can't have Matt Irwin play. You can't. You can't have Matt Irwin playing in the playoffs. There's no way. You just got to throw it. You got to do it. I would do it. Since it seems ownership doesn't ever want to rebuild this ever, I'm doing it all day. Tell me what you think, Washington Capitals fans. If you're on Facebook right now, search Perlo Wisdom NHL on YouTube. Subscribe to my channel. And let me know what you think. Or just listen to all the future trade videos I'm going to do. Because there are going to be tons of them. Next. I have the Seattle Kraken. And I love, 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 love this move for the Seattle Kraken. The most underrated defense in the league by far. Vince Dunn has just gone off this year. Adam Larson has been a great defensive defenseman for a lot of years, and he just seems to be getting better at 30 years old. You got Jamie Alexiak. You got William Borgen. Carson Soucy is so underrated. It's crazy. And right now they have Cal Fleury, but Jaden Schwartz will come in. He's not bad. But I'll tell you what, I would take Jake McCabe over Susie Fleury or Schwartz all day long. If you don't know Seattle fans, Jake McCabe is probably one of the most underrated defensemen in the league. And he probably is available. 
And the way Seattle is playing with this incredibly balanced lineup that has depth all through for a shot at a chance this year. And not to mention he's got three years left on his contract, so he's only 29 years old. He's got time. You have time with this guy. You're not getting a rental. I would seriously consider throwing the 2023 first and maybe Kale Flurry out there and seeing if it sticks. I would do it. I really would. The way this team is built, the way Francis has brought in guys like Bjorkstrand and Burakovsky, who I believe is injured right now. Where is Burakovsky? Yeah, right here. Andre Burakovsky. The way he's made it a balanced lineup the way it is, McCabe would just add to that. I mean, you'll love, love, love him. I swear to God. Just the way you love Tanev, you will love Jake McCabe. And this team would be, I would just be rooting for this team like crazy. No superstars, although we know that Beneers will eventually be that. No doubt about it. But it's just a well-balanced lineup. If there was ever a lineup that was created for the game today in pure depth, this is it. And they could do it, man. Seattle could do do it. They could beat Dallas. They could beat Colorado. And if they get a guy like McCabe, I think they could even do it. More, Much more chance of it. You know, uh, The only problem I have is I still am a little concerned about the goaltending, but if you don't do it this year and you got McCabe, you can always go out there and still look at goaltending next year. I would do this all day long. Tell me what you think about that, Seattle Kraken fans. Perlo Wisdom NHL's Perlo Wisdom NHL. Perlo Wisdom NHL. Search on YouTube. Subscribe to my channel. Comment in the comment section or comment on Facebook if you're on Facebook now. And I'll talk to you about it. I want to hear from you because that's why I do these videos, don't you know? All right, Los Angeles Kings is my number one spot that he goes. And that is mainly because he is a lefty. He can play right, but they don't need right. They need left defensemen. And they have a ton of prospects to send back. And they could use a strong, big guy on their defense. And he is that. He is a hard-hitting He's not super big, but he plays way bigger than he is than he is structurally or size-wise. And I think he would fit in perfect here. So what would you get back? 2023 first and Spence. Something like that. 2023 first and Spence. And if the bidding war gets huge... You might even want to throw in Matt Roy because you don't need him in this trade. If you could throw in two defensemen and a first, you would have them all day long. Maybe Velarde, you know, you hope that you don't have to throw that much in there. But honestly, if I did, if it were me, I would do it. As long as I could still get goaltending while I do it. Because they need goaltending at the deadline. No doubt about that. Uh, but we got into that with the Vimelka trade video. And you might want to look at that. But assuming you can get a goaltender here. If you can get a Jake McCabe to add to guys like Jersey, Anderson, um, you know, Spence if he plays... You got yourself a solid defense right here. Anderson, Dowdy, McCabe, Dursey, Edler, and Sean Walker or Roy if they decide not to trade them. Much better defense than what you have right now. But you got to make sure you got to get, get goaltending, right? You got to make sure you get goaltending in L.A.
All right. That's my full 42. That's all I got to give for you today. Um, I'll be doing lots of trade videos up until now. Up or up until now? After now? <laughs> I'll be doing tons of them. Tell me what player you would like to see me do for a trade video before the trade line, deadline or after. And tell me what you think about all the trades I had here. Did you like them? Did you not like them? But until next time, I'm Pearl of Wisdom. Have a great day. Lots of love to you.